It stands in your path. A great hungry maw, ready to consume you whole. It is ginormous and inescapable. It is your future. Welcome to Night Vale. Jeffrey Craner are back with a new Night Vale novel. For all you people out there who can't get enough of Night Vale, it's very exciting. Especially since this book covers one of the most fascinating and terrifying aspects of Night Vale, something we've both been dying to hear more about, and that's the joyous congregation of the Smiling God. I swear I have war flashbacks when I think about them and their founder, Kevin, who filled his radio station with organs and body parts. But look how much nicer this place looks. You can see the Sean's contributions all over the desk. And running down the walls. Whenever I hear his voice, I have the urge to run and hide in a dark place and never come out. Kevin isn't in the book, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you feel about him. But as the founder of the Joyous Congregation of the Smiling God, you definitely feel his influence when you're trying to decide how you feel about the religion. The main character is Nilanjana Sikdar, a scientist from out of town. While she's lived in Night Vale for a couple of years now, she's still considered an interloper by the rest of the town. Nils wants to be considered a true citizen of Night Vale, but she still hasn't fully accepted the town into her heart yet. Nils throws herself into her work, making things that will make the world a better place, like safe pesticides, but won't win her any prizes. While her co-workers do prize-winning, grant-winning work like showing Potato's disapproval. Nils works closely with Carlos, who is looking into the house that doesn't exist and trying to do science on it to figure out if it has any connection with the desert otherworld. He wants to protect Night Vale from any threat that it could offer. But at the same time Carlos is trying to do his science on the house, there have been massive earthquakes swallowing up Night Vale buildings whole. One of the first things to go is Big Rico's Pizza. And what the fuck is Night Vale without Big Rico's Pizza? The city council warns Carlos to stop his investigation into the house, but Carlos wants to get to the bottom of it, so he asks Nils to look into it instead. Her investigation leads her to the doors of the joyous congregation of the Smiling God and Daryl, one of its members who she kind of has a thing for. Daryl's a good guy, but he has trouble communicating with other people because the congregation dictates that members should be smiling at all times. Thus, he always seems to be wearing a phony smile on his face that never really matches his emotions. He's interested in Nils too, but neither of them know how far they can trust each other, which leads to an interesting relationship. Nils is put off with his creepy religion and how they might be plotting to destroy Night Vale, while Darrow wants to find common ground between his religion and the rest of the world. We get a substantial dive into the joyous congregation of the Smiling God, complete with creepy stained glass windows and enough bizarre rituals to fill up a cracked article. But the best part of the novel is the interplays between science and religion. The US is consumed with the debate about what place each has in society, and Craner and Fink make Night Vale the sandbox for their debate. You have examples of people who believe in pure religion, like the congregation's pastor and assistant, and you have examples of people who believe in pure science, like Carlos. But to solve the problem, that Night Vale is facing, Nils has to put aside the prejudices of science and religion to figure out what's causing the earthquakes. Of course, the novel is rife with Night Vale moments, like when Nils befriends and comforts a helicopter, or when everyone is eating invisible pizza, or the alternate fantastic versions of pop culture like The Wizard of Oz and Carrie. It Devours does connect a bit with the previous novel. We get to check in with Jackie, who's aged up a little bit, and we also get some great scenes from Josh and Diane Creighton. As a bonus, we get some insight into how signally sweet Cecil and Carlos's relationship is. Hashtag relationship. Relationship goals. They're just so supportive and right for each other, it just makes me want to throw up. Even better, we get insight into Carlos himself. We have only ever really seen him through the lens of Cecil, and Cecil's not exactly the most reliable narrator when it comes to Carlos. He has a square jaw and teeth like a military cemetery. His hair is perfect, and we all hate 
and despair and love that perfect hair in equal measure. It's nice to see him through someone else's eyes and understand him a little better, and his obsession with the desert otherworld becomes a segue into his outlook on life and his life experiences. Even life experiences that Cecil doesn't know about. It Devours feels more organized than Welcome to Night Vale. It seems to have more defined goals when it comes to plot and theme. It has a different story structure as well without the interludes from Cecil. It feels more like a book than an extra long podcast script. It doesn't make it better, it just makes it different. It Devours is a great addition to the Welcome to Night Vale family, and anyone who loves the series is going to appreciate this book. And of course, if you want a true dose of Night Vale-ness, check out the audiobook read by Cecil himself. The bottom line is, if you love everything Night Vale, you are definitely going to love this book. Where Welcome to Night Vale the book dealt with the nature of growing up and responsibility, It Devours looks at the intersection of religion and science, and it just proves that Night Vale is the perfect vehicle to explore any subject. The proverb of the day is, you're a fool whether you dance or not, so you might as well dance.